I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Gokshay Guven, the CEO of Calder. Gokshay, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time today. Thank you, Ashton. Good to be here. You're very welcome. Excited to dive into what your team's working on at Calder. But first, I would love to hear a little bit about yourself and, and your background in the blockchain industry and, and how that led up to starting Calder. And then we'll dive into everything. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I have been in the intersection of crypto and consumer for more than four years. I uh, started in 2017-18 cycle, which was known to be a bear market and uh, started uh, my works at Celo with consumer applications and uh, and Celo for those that are not uh, that don't know is a layer one solution with its own wallet and vertically integrated solutions and really seeing how the future of crypto will be valuable if we bring the next billion people on chain mm -hmm. and as some um, as someone who is from Turkey, the reason I got into crypto first was really chasing the idea of how might we create new economies for creators, consumers, or day-to-day -day users that are independent of just local economics and politics. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of building a universal economy. And have been chasing that idea since then. My day jobs have always been in crypto, engineering products, uh, bit at Celo, Robin Crypto, and lastly, uh, early team at OpenSea. And what I call my night job mm -hmm. is always been about creators and brands. Mm -hmm. I've been a general artist myself and have worked uh, closely with luxury and D2C brands for the past years. And especially the past year, these two worlds collided. And, like, mm -hmm. uh, and that's when Calder was born with early waves of brands trying to come into crypto and early waves of early 2020 creators coming into nfts mm -hmm. we were able to do that these are the first applications that crypto will break out of web like web3 bubble and jump into the day-to-day -day consumer and creators and that's how calder was born where out of a need of brands, I started helping a lot of brands around my orbit via advising on how they can start leveraging NFTs for engaging their customers and creating bottom-up engagement and really seeing that we lack the unified tools to uh, onboard the next billion consumers on chain and next thousands of brands on chain. And what helped those early pilots and brands are now the first forks of GitHub, the like GitHub forks of uh, Calder. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I left OpenSea and started building Calder. And that's how I'm here today. Amazing backstory, Gukshay. And, you know, I've actually had quite a few projects that were focused on the Turkey markets recently on the show and just hearing about you know the inflation there and the, the entrance into cryptocurrencies there's a lot of individuals there be able being able to invest in you know, preserve their wealth through getting bitcoin and some of these digital assets uh, but what i really like about your approach is you know creating value and with the you know future of content creation on web3 and nfts being a major part of that but i feel like it's going to expand even more beyond that um, there's a lot more value creation then obviously you want to preserve your wealth by having it in an asset that's not going to lose value. And being able to get access to Bitcoin uh, is a great first step to that. But to be able to create value and create content um, that is sort of independent of where you're from uh, and into this globalized Web3 uh, e-commerce world, I feel like that's really the next step. And, and there's a lot more value creation in that. So I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing a little bit more about how, how Calder's doing that. And you also mentioned there about your OpenSea experience. And you know that's one of the major catalysts and was the biggest yeah. driver of revenue for NFTs over, over the last year. Um, and a lot of major companies that weren't in Web3 at all sort of use that as their platform to get on there. Um, and, and I'm guessing you've gained a lot of insights uh, working at OpenSea that you've sort of moved in to, to call there. Um, what can you say about you know mainstream companies entering into Web3 and into NFTs uh, and what you've seen uh, through OpenSea and what you're taking into Calder? Yeah, 
Uh, at Calder, we are hyper focused on building the unified tools uh, for brands to build Web3 powered brand loyalty. What this means is in three steps, a brand can start their NFT memberships, uh, launch their rewards safely and with other partners and start setting experiences for customers in any level to start earning those rewards and upgrade their NFTs and create this new network uh, and exchange of rewards and memberships where for the first time I as a customer own my membership and can essentially appreciate the economical and social value of that membership and reward outside of the brand. So for the first time, for my membership doesn't only mean 10% off, but that I uh, that it means my new status and my new earnings. Mm -hmm. And with this being said, I really resonate with what you said about like V1 of crypto we've seen and the future we will see. We are still so early that we have seen great applications on remittances or like um, like stable coins and basically pre press uh, like um, wealth and like in like international like uh, applications of DeFi and um, especially for developing nations that I focused on before. What we are seeing with this wave, especially started with OpenSea and NFTs, is the future of ownership economy, mm -hmm. like where I as a user own the network I'm participating in or am a stakeholder to the, to the network I'm participating in. This mm. will have applications to social networks. This will have applications to brands. This will have applications to creators. And Calder is hyper, like, uh, specialized on essentially powering any brand and creator to empower their customers and turn customers into owners, co-creators into their network. And when we look into the macroeconomic ecosystem, apart from only Web3.2, has, there has never been a time ads were this expensive or um, D2C costs didn't even break even. And that what we are seeing is there's a drastic shift in access to third party cookies in starting 2023. And that with saturated marketing, none of the brands are able to make sense to their customers. Like every, like there's 50% of brands uh, that like customers believe they will switch a brand the moment they have a better customer experience. Mm -hmm. So we are the world where customers and fans to the creators are desensitized by engagement. So we need to create socioeconomic incentives for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, we are like focused on in the V2 of the ecosystem. Yeah, I completely agree. There's so many companies that, you know, they have uh, brand loyalty points or you know, membership points, uh, but does it really stop somebody from, you know, switching um, to, an, to another company if, if something changes pretty quickly? And I feel like uh, the evolution that we see in NFTs could change that game where you could really build more longer term uh, brand loyalty. And... <clears throat> You know, looking through NFTs in the last year, especially on OpenSea, when I talk to people that aren't really involved in Web3 and they say, like, what is an NFT? They are still thinking of it as uh, simply, uh, you know, digital artwork. And it was great to see, you know, the art industry come into NFTs uh, in, in any, any of these industries that weren't previously involved in, in the technology side or the Web3 side, getting involved in uh, Web3. Um, but I feel like... NFTs have so much more potential to dive into all of these other industries and we're seeing uh, the next wave in the next cycle of NFT 2.0 and, and I saw little bits of it here and there in, in the past uh, cycle where you know there was some kind of membership or other utilities beyond the artwork and I feel like this is something that Cal Calder is tapping into. Um, do you think that this will be a huge catalyst for uh, other groups that weren't previously involved in Web3 to be able to gain value from this new ecosystem? Yeah, that's definitely st spot on. What we have seen in the past year is really the V1 of NFT. It's like we've seen NFT minting and collecting with no post engagement. So we are at the stage where like, if you look at brands like Nike and Gucci that made in accumulate like $250 million and more, um, every brand is right now asking what's next and every mm -hmm. creator is also asking what's next because there's no right set of tools 
to engage the communities that are the wallets that have minted those NFTs. That when you really look at it, a brand essentially creates a new customer base and a community base to engage when they create a new collection. But yet, a lot of brands and creators did this without really understanding what they are doing at first. So mm -hmm. now we all essentially build like, and that's why bear markets are a great time to build because it's a great time for NFTs to be built for the DEX hypothesis. And what I am really excited about is actually moving away from these static, uh, like collect 10,000 like NFT like collections to really moving towards an ecosystem where NFTs are just the underlying infrastructure for powering interoperability, which means like powering partnerships and a shared standard that any creator brand product can use mm -hmm. to partner with each other and create cross utility rewards. Mm -hmm. And because what Web2 is missing right now is if you look at, let's say like Nike and uh, like uh, Target, like two loyalty programs, if they were to try to partner today, there's no way they can do this because they don't share the same standard. They uh, mm -hmm. have segmented databases. There's not even the right way to find who is the top intersection of the two brands' customers today. So with these perpetuating effect, effects of like Web2 centralized like loyalty and ecosystems, um, NFTs and the Web3 powered loyalty can really be the right solution to create seamless and like frictionless partnerships for brands, but also 100x better utility for consumers. So it's like a win-win application that we are excited about. But at the same time, in a macro level for NFTs, we're really going to see like what I think unlock, uh, like uh, will be uh, like unlocking of metadata on the NFTs because mm -hmm. what NFTs are great at is it grows with you as you contribute to ecosystems. Take your membership, like if you're completing like a rabbit hole quest or like a Calder like experience, your NFT, the moment you sign in, takes this into its metadata and it can upgrade and dynamically change and evolve with you. And that's the next unlock on um, NFTs as your identity layer and unified like identity is what I am mm -hmm. the most excited about the next cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no identity. I feel like that's, <clears throat> it's a still at the very beginning, but you know, the NFT technology can really, that's going to change the future of, uh, of involved, uh, you know, being involved in the internet, you know, when we finally merge web three with uh, digital identities and, um, now, the question I have about working with you know major brands uh, and smaller brands as well <clears throat> is I feel like you know in the same way that blockchain and digital assets can provide democratized access to people who didn't have access to these services before, uh, whether they're a small individual that didn't have the capability of getting a bank account, or whether it's a small business that is having a hard time competing with these major brands. You know, obviously we're yeah. seeing these major brands. Uh, t in the last two years take a lot of market share, right? And I myself like to support smaller companies as well because like they, they need help to be able to stay alive, you know? All the, a lot of these small companies are just people like you and I that are just trying to self-start, right? Do you see the technology that Calder is building uh, have sort of the same benefit for small companies that are looking to build loyalty as well as these major brands? Yeah, definitely. And that's also spot on to say that, like, really, like, the biggest draw, like, we see for um, small to medium businesses to Calder is that there's no way you can build a brand from zero to one in current, like, D2C, like, uh, playbook anymore. Because, like, Instagram ads are so costly. Mm -hmm. There's no way to build a following. And, like, if you try to go on different social media, it's so saturated by bigger brands and followings that you have no right where to start bootstrap your following and community. But Web3 is that white space that you can essentially create a promise to your new customers and that will earn with you and appreciate like with you through your rewards as you grow more as well. That is why like embedding uh, like token economics principles to different reward systems are great because if 
your loyalty rewards and your membership earns and grows with the growth of the company or like the brand you are supporting, you have much more incentive to stay with that brand. But right now, if you look at the Web2 loyalty, why would you stay with a like brand if you're in their loyalty program, like mm -hmm. for their 10% off or for their um, like new like free product? Probably not because the like um, they can't buy your loyalty with these type of like rewards. And what we really see is that's why like a lot, like we are right now working with a D2C makeup brand that is going to be launching in the new year and they wanna be fully on chain. What this means for them is they wanna launch fully with a Web3 strategy and have that as part of their DNA because they want to create a bottom up engagement and, uh, and create a zero to a community that supports them from the start and do so with their loyalty and memberships. And I think we will see these use cases scaling as we write the case studies and playbooks with early brands. Mm. That's great to hear. I'm looking forward to seeing that release, Gukche. And, and, and speaking of scaling, I saw that uh, Calder is working on scaling as well and that your team's just closing uh, a fundraising round. I'd love to hear a little bit about that uh, your partners and, and with that closed, what are the next steps for growth for Calder? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we closed our first round, raising uh, three million with uh, really f focusing on creator brand and go to market support with our angels and investors. Right now, we are working with uh, DJ Blonde, which is Bond, Indigo Fund, uh, 8VC, Human Capital, Soma Capital, 500VC from Emerging Europe and uh, many more and like a lot of brand advisor and founders and um, people from the PR world like Arda Kutsal and Ma Matam Demers and many more and uh, really focusing on bringing our early customers as like brand customers as like supporters too mm -hmm. and scaling our brand go to market strategy and at the same time scaling our team. This fundraise will help us to serve more brands as we when as we just finalize our pilot beta testing mode to finalize our next cohort of brand customers from our waitlist and early uh, calls and that we will be launching publicly with these brands in quarter one. Wow, very exciting and c congratulations on that. Uh, again, I I'm really looking forward to uh, 2023 and uh, yeah. what the growth for Calder, uh, hopefully, you know, the, 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 not just uh, the company growth, but the industry as well. And people realize the underlying value that NFTs and this technology can have uh, for tokenizing memberships and, and creation. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And with Calder, you know, obviously the, the launch is super important. I'm guessing you're sort of focused purely on that leading up, you know, t time moves quickly in, in cryptocurrency, especially, uh, but it sounds like, you know, Q1 will be around the corner. Um, after that launch, sort of in a one year uh, roadmap down the road, you know, where do you hope Calder to be uh, as a company and in, in the industry? Yeah. So uh, for the brands that we're working with now, we have an area of brands that range from the E2C to luxury world to like retailers and uh, and and also creators and and like and prominent in the NFT community because our thesis is very big. We think in the future like everything is a brand, a creator, the coffee you drink every day, like the DJ you listen to, or um, like even like the restaurant you like ate at yesterday. Like every part mm -hmm. of your life has brands like surrounding you and all these experiences people and products are brands that needs loyalty so we have a very aggressive take in the sense that we want to be the category defining product in the next generation loyalty so for the next year we're hyper focused on essentially bringing the these early brands and helping them write the playbook of web powered brand loyalty and and use those as case studies to publicly launch our tools, ideally end of the, like quarter four and depending on the success and scale of the brands like we are working with. Because we know in the brand ecosystem, 95% of brands follow 5%.
this is like building social media 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Every brand was asking what to do in social media to agencies or products. But someone productized social media and like the strategy. And the moment we do that, we essentially are the leader in the market, but also have the scale tools to serve everyone. So now like we are in the waitlist mode because we want to onboard brands intentionally and help them. And but our tools are ready to serve like any brand ranging like that can even have more than 10,000 members in their loyalty program and take over that $250 billion annual spend on loyalty and CRM. Yeah. And and you're, you're very right. You know, everyone's following the select few and, and when they can drastically change the market. And I feel like this technology could potentially do that uh, for, for small brands as well, which I'm most looking forward to. Uh, yeah. for, for companies, you know, or individual content creators and anybody who has a, a brand that's looking to follow along with Calder yeah. to, for, for the pilot launch and as you continue to grow, what is the best way for them to uh, check out that wait list or follow along for the updates for the launch? Yeah, definitely. Well, if you are a consumer that is excited to use, um, like become a member to Calder Brands, the best way is to uh, sign up on the wait list at calder.app and also follow our social outlets like Calder World at Twitter and Instagram because we do a lot of education and like releases there. And if you're a brand or a creator really excited about this, uh, please reach out like uh, hello at calder.xyz or gokja at calder.xyz is great to start the conversation and also going on the wait list and calder.app is great. But we always love people coming up with ideas and we find a way to work together. So uh, any type of stakeholder there are welcome to reach out to us and follow us along in the journey. Great, and I will leave those links in the description box below as well, Gokshay, to make it easy for the viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, today. I'm really looking yes. forward to, uh, to the upcoming launch and I will be following along as well. And let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, this is great. Thank you, Ashton. See you soon.